but it's so amazing and without any are there any others <laughs> thank you i cannot pronounce that word again can you guys say it loud thank you let's welcome our dearest dearest dr nancy <laughs> Wow, I don't know what you all feel when I walk into this space in the morning and maybe Emmanuel is there and one or two, but there is an energy. Do you feel it? There's a lot. I go in and out of the scene sometimes during the week and you're not here. And I don't feel it. It's, there is an energy and a love and a connectedness and a safety in this room and in this community that is all about secure attachment. And I'm going to, you know, we always often say, well, what is it about hope for life? What is it? And I really got it as I was getting ready for you um, to do this, that this is about secure attachment. That's what hope for life is. It's a secure attachment community. Sometimes it's called a positive holding environment, but that's kind of a little too frugal. <laughs> so this is about secure attachment. So um, I'm going to have a song, too, that I'm going to start with. And we do pick our music specially and talk about it. Um, but I'm going to tell a little story about how this came about um, six, seven months ago. Because uh, we sit down, Giovanna, Gigi, Giorgio, Lockie, we talk about well, what do we think you all want to learn, what, what seems to fit with what you're doing in your groups and what we're talking about. So Lucky and Giovanna look at me and say, we want you to do attachment theory and attachment styles. <laughs> I looked at them and said, I don't know a whole lot about that. You know, and I don't know. it was a course, in, it wasn't even a course in graduate school, it was mentioned. And I never kind of went, got into it, and I understand why now. <laughs> and I said, but I don't know a lot about it. So lucky, you know how lucky does that help us? Just go learn it, you can do it. <laughs> it's lucky. <laughs> He bestows it upon you, and that's what I did. So um, this is actually the first time that I've really spoken about this. And before we get going, um, one of the reasons I know why I didn't study it and learn it is there's a lot of anxiety in it. Yeah, there's a lot of anxiety. And you know, when uh, we send out those links sometimes to take a survey, I'm always a little reluctant, so I want to say this to you. Those surveys are just, they're not diagnoses, and I don't want you to take them, you know, hardcore, this means this. And I think what happened to me is I probably took one of those surveys when I was younger, and I didn't like what it said, you know? I didn't like knowing, you know, we're all kind of a little bit like pound puppies. You know what a pound puppy is? A little this and a little that. We may have a predominant style, but honestly, we all have a little bit of this, you know, going on, you know, if not all the time at different phases you know, in, in our life, you know? So I don't want you to take those things so, I like when you take the character straight seriously, because those are the positive parts. <laughs> but this is some of that you know, language that is part of psychiatry and medicine, kind of before the, and, and it, it, it can be heavy. So I want you, it's just, the power of words is only there to help us understand ourselves. And one of the gifts, I think, of Hope for Life, and I gotta tell you, you all get a multi-million dollar education here, not just the love and the connection, but the speakers and the people. Is it, um, th this is a very dense and difficult topic. People spend their whole lives studying it. So I like to just bring what the practical stuff. So the words are just there to give you a handle, because one of the things I think that we do, they do beautifully, I'm like, we on part of it. We do beautifully is we, we, we create a lot of doors with a lot of handles for you. We bring all kinds of different theories, different experts, different people, because for everybody's a little different. Sometimes if I walk you through that door, you go, bingo, I got it. You don't get it. But the, 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 well, so this is another door that, to give you some language to understand yourself. It's all compatible. They're all just different doors and different handles. So um, uh, I think it's really, um, so I just want to say relax about those surveys. You know, if you take them different times, you notice they're going to come out different. Of course, everybody wants to be the way you want to be. I'm going to be the secure attachment, okay? Um, and, and the good news is probably about 50 to 65% of people are that, but nobody's 100% secure attachment, so don't think there is, okay? <laughs> it doesn't happen. But secure is the most prominent, then anxious next to it. We got a lot of anxious stuff going. Avoided, very little disorganized. Um, I'll talk more about them, but I do have an introductory song. 
So if you play a little bit of it, you don't have to go again. So this is my song for you. <laughs> It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you, so. Let's make the most of this beautiful day, beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine, would you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please, won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? So, I, you all know, this, this was, this was one of my first secure attachment figures. I never would have called him that before, but that's exactly what Mr. Rogers was for me and for many, 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 many children and people across the world. A very secure, accountable, he did the same thing when he came in the room every day. So, and he always said, started with, it's a beautiful day today, isn't it, in our neighborhood? It's a beautiful day today. I always started with that and then went and put on his sweater, went and put on his shoes. He was available. He was predictable. He was consistent. He had emotional regulation. You never you know, saw it up or down. He's a beautiful, beautiful example of secure attachment. And um, so the history of him, he was the first minister that was ever allowed to have a TA ministry of children. Did you know that? His church actually said, your ministry is children and on TV. Uh, so, so, and I never, I knew I loved him, you know, I talk about him all the time, but I hadn't realized that that's what it was. It's secure attachment. So, um, is there any other anxieties? Is anybody sitting feeling anxious about that survey? I just want to know, anybody, who did feel anxiety about that survey? That was okay, yeah. Anything else that I can say to kind of reassure you about this? That's, this, this is not a rubber stamp. It's just some words, some concepts. You know? And you're not a piece of paper. You never are a survey, so just got to remember that. It's just a computer. Is there anything else I need to say to help? There, there were two tests, and I got two different results. Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, I took about 15 of them to see which ones I thought were the best and similar, and I got different results. You know, those are predominant. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, we, yes? I think, I think with a lot of these, he's got it, he's got it. With a lot of these I think for me anyway, though, a lot of these surveys and a lot of these, whatever you want to call them, evaluation of I, I always, my, my mind goes to the right and wrong all the time, you know? So I start differentiating between the, the good, the bad, the right, the wrong, you know? So that brings anxiety. Okay. So thank you. And I'm, I don't want to get lost in the surveys because that's a small point. But uh, exactly, George hit it on the head. You know, it elicits, you, you, your brain goes to that black, white, good, bad stuff. And if you haven't noticed, that's underneath a lot of our healing, you know, in so many different ways. You know, that black and white thinking. And just to tie that in, children think black and white. Uh, you know, their brains aren't even capable of seeing all those shades of gray. You know, if, 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 if I say to you and you're a little girl, I say, Keep an, keep an eye on that. You might say to me, which eye, Dr. Nancy? <laughs> children are very concrete, and they only see in black and white. And if things go well enough as we grow up, and we have good enough parents and enough stability, we start seeing shades of gray. But now let's just add in another piece, which is, we could add, I'm not going to get off this, but if you add in a family style or religion, a lot of our religions are very black and white. 
this is good and this is bad. So this kind of is in our thinking. So we kind of divide this into two parts, even though we'll never get to all of it. We just, I'm going to lay down the groundwork and teach you some of the words, and we're going to kind of get familiar with what, what part of examples of these different styles. Um, my main goal today is for you to kind of just learn the language and see what your attachment style is, what you think. It's what you think and here the survey. And so that you get kind of familiar with this and to these four main kinds of uh, attachment. And I think you're going to find it really um, exciting and fun and um, very, very helpful. We said to Hockey, we always have a couple phone calls before we get ready. I said, you know, if somebody had taught, this needs to be taught kind of in early junior high. Before we even start dating, before the bar mitzvahs, the mitzvahs, the day, and the kid says, if somebody would have taught this to me, it would have saved me two marriages, I'm not even funny, and some other really, really bad relationships. Because nobody teaches it to us. They don't, you know. And so one of my main goals as we move through this is you're going to find parts of yourself all over this. You're going to think about your partner's style, your mother's style, and it, it, that's the usefulness of it. If you can start seeing these behaviors, and what we want to train ourselves to do is secure attachment. We want to know what that looks like and what that feels like, because that's what we want to choose. And it's not that it's bad to be any of these other things, but we can learn more about becoming securely attached. And if we have a lot of this, the anxious and the secure can work together. So it's not that these are bad, they're not. But the secure attachment is the grounded one. And the interesting thing about secure attachment is when you're securely attached and grounded in your relationships, because that's where we get our attachments from. Um, I was even thinking, I was joking a little bit with, um, Oh, I don't know, with the beautiful dog over there, I was saying, you know, my, my, part of my secure attachment is my service dog, is Amber. You know, what, what do you think the service dog It's for anxiety. But what do I get? I get a secure attachment, which she's always there, she's loving, you know, she's comforting. And you know, when you have a pet, I don't know if you know this, but when it's like you're holding your pet and you have it, your heart starts to co-regulate. If you're sitting and petting your dog, or like with your baby, or like when you're making love or cuddling, that's what starts to happen. Your your heart starts to co-regulate and beat in rhythm. So that's what we're kind of looking for. So we're going to go through the attachment styles. I want you to have a kind of working knowledge of them. I want you to understand a little more about your attachment styles. And I want you to understand the importance of this. Um, the significance of this is being conscious and being aware of how you behave. And how this kind of came about. Oh, you know what I want to do first before I go into this? Yes. It's funny, I talked to Dr. Nancy uh, sometimes. <laughs> but I don't know if you all heard what she said. Because I spoke to uh, David for yesterday and every sentence that came out of her mouth, I was like, oh wow. I learned so much from her again. I mean, y'all have no idea to have her here and to, to share with her. I don't know if that's what you said, and I want to ask you a question because I just had like a little explore. To get out of that black and white thinking is part of our healing. Is that what you just said? Yes, Do you all absolutely. Yes. absolutely. A lot of us don't get healed because we have this black and white. Is that what you said? Totally, 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 totally. 30 years later, I hear that sentence and I'm like, Oh my God. And all she can do is so. Yeah. I mean, if you want healing, a big part of it is to get out of that black and white thing. Because that's how we think right, wrong, good, bad, black, and white. And that's where a lot of us, most of us, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's fine. I had a lot of those, oh my God, it's kind of sitting in my kitchen, right? That's where I study you know, seeing you on Zoom. But as I was doing this, I was going, oh, that's what that relationship was about. Oh, that's why you did that. Oh, I see what that push pull was about. I, mean, I sit in my kitchen and I have these spiritual eyes. Uh, sometimes I have to call somebody and share them. I'll call Lucky, I call Martha, I call Phil. Wow. So I hope you have some ahas with this. So the importance of this is uh, the way attachment only means how do we connect with people. That's all it's a fancy word. 
So before we get going on this, um, I need, <coughs> could somebody bring this one chair and put it in the middle here? I'm going to turn this around. I want this to stand up. Yeah, just put a chair right there in the middle. So, this um, is again through the gift of Mr. Rogers. It was 1997, and he accepted a, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Emmys. You know, the Emmys are for, from the Academy of TV, Arts and Sciences, as opposed to movies. So he got a Lifetime Achievement Award. And what I'm going to share with you is really what he did. You, you can go on YouTube and see what he did. But um, this, is some, this is exactly what he did. It takes about three minutes. It moves me deeply, so I want to share it with you. So, um, so many people have helped you come to where you are today, this morning, this day, us being together, this time in your life, and whatever is going on with you. Some of these people are here in the room. Some of these people live in the community. Some of these people are gone and they're in heaven, but they have all been, you stand on those shores of those people. These people have loved you into being. These people have loved you into being. They have wanted the best for you. They have wanted you to be the best and want your life to turn out the best. So I want you to take, we're going to take about 15 seconds, and I want you to think about that person that comes to you this morning that has loved you into being. And they're in this chair. I want you to think about them. Do you want to close your eyes? I want you to see them. Do you see their face? And I'm going to be quiet for about 15 seconds or so, so you can really feel this person that loved you into being. So, whoever you've been thinking about is, would be very pleased to know that they have been so important and instrumental in your lives. So let's just do a little pop-up and just say, who are you thinking of? I was thinking of my grandma, Fanny. Let's pop up around the room. Who are you thinking of? My wife. Mm -hmm. Just pop up that popcorn. Your mom. My mom. Your mom. My husband. My husband. Your great grandma. My grandma. Great grandma. Great grandma. My sister. Your sister. My father. Grandfather. Okay, so I saw some tears in the room. It's frequently brings tears. So this is this is a secure attachment person in your life. You didn't realize that this is a secure attachment. <clears throat> And I love that phrase, and I purposely wanted to start in your hearts and in your secure attachment, because it's a beautiful thing. Who has loved you into being? Mm. Don't you love that phrase? I really love it. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, so. <clears throat> so, just kind of, you know, when you started, just don't you know how both loving and intentional this community is? I'm talking a lot about hope for life before I dive in, because I want you to get it, that a lot of the wonderful soup in the air we're breathing in here is all about secure attachment and creating that. From the time you walked in this room, 
And this is what it is when you have people, when, and if we had had parents that were attuned, the music was selected very specifically. It changes with different speakers. Sometimes it's a song that touches Lackey, sometimes it's something that touches Emmanuel. The music was curated for you when you walked in the room it, to take you into a, a deeper spiritual place to help you transition from out there in the, the chaotic world and transition into this place. The celebration of somebody's birthday, what is that? It says, I see you, you're important. We do that all the time in this community. So all of these, if you think about it, are really features of having a secure community where you feel seen, things are, where the people in your community are attuned. They're paying attention. So I just want you to understand that that's a lot of what happens for here. It's not magic. Um, it is magic, the love part. It's also about, you know, parenting is, is uh, not magical. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of loving focus. And I also wanted to purposely set this container because this stuff's hard to talk about. It is, it's hard to talk about it. Trust me, I realize it brings up stuff. It brings up stuff for me. You know, I always joke and tell you I had 2,000 years of therapy, but about that. You know? <laughs> so, you know, it brings up stuff because we're human. And, and we are imperfect, and, and, and so that's just the way it goes. So let's see, um, do you want to go to next? Let's see, where are we? Because I talked, we did that, we did that. Um, also in the way of putting this, in, I'm not going to go through all of this. I like to take you to the top of the mountain so you have a big picture of you, of not just what I'm doing, but I think that everybody that comes into Hope for Life, whatever your role is. We're helping you build inner resources. And building inner resources, I came up with this this morning, is, a, is, is like, you know, your, your trainer, when you go to the gym, they'll say, build a strong inner core, you know, get this, this part of your body. That's what it's all about, these inner resources. And believe it or not, we're not born with those. We, we may be born with an inclination. Some of us may be a little more grateful by nature, but it, as everybody has told you, you have to build these resources, and it takes work. Okay? And the piece that I try to bring to you, too, is you can't just have an experience and grow from it. That's not the way it works. You know, the experience may be wonderful, it may be terrific, it may be the best workshop and speaker you ever heard, but unless, and I talked to you a lot about installing it in your brain, just like an installation, if you don't, Install it in your brain, it's just a nice experience. So what does that mean? There's many ways we install it in our brain. We move it into behavior as fast as we can. There's some very interesting research about change, which is the people that do change the best, they do some small little piece almost immediately. Okay, I know I'm diverging a lot, but I want you to have this framework. Um, like many, many times, including myself, clients will come into me and they're talking about I need to eat more healthy, I need to lose weight, da 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 And they'll spend weeks and months discussing, should I go to the gym, should I do CrossFit, should I go on the South Beach diet, and talk, 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 talk. And it goes on for months and months. But the person that changes the most is the client that comes in, not just the most, but really gets into it. They say, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, I don't know if I have money for it, I don't wanna do it. But you know what I can do? I can put my sneakers in the back of my car and I, I go by back to this hospital every day, and I can put my sneakers in my car, and I'm going to start by, I'm just going to walk around Baptist. You, you get, you get, those are the people that change. So my invitation to you is, you're going to take something, one or two small things today, put it into action, put it into action. Share it with somebody, see it, start looking at, hmm, I wonder if that's this, am I being that style? Is that coming from my secure style? Am I being a little anxious now? All non-judgmentally. So we put it into action. So we have to engage. We can't just experience. Them. It's like studying. You know, whatever you used to do to study, you know, you have to do it to get it in your brain. You know, it never worked for me to just listen to the lecture. And, so, yeah. so, you know, and that's the point. That, that's the experience of the lecture. But it isn't going to get in the brain unless I had to do index cards and I had to make notes and that and that one. That's what I mean by the installation. And when I say to you sometimes, savoring, we've talked about that, 
you have the best savory device in our hands 24 7 and that is the phone we have all this fabulous pictures but if you just go through them fast that's not savory you know, you know when i say you look at that picture you know looking for at least a minute and remind yourself where were you what did the air smell like how cool is it that's all about engaging your brain so it gets in there next <coughs> so another reminder that before we get this our brains are excellent remember that old negativity bias how many people are here for the first time <clears throat> Okay, good. Sorry. All right, great. I love it. So if, you don't, if that's anything's not clear, I like to hear from first timers. The way our brain is, we are hardwired for connection, which is why this is all about. From the beginning of time, we've been hardwired to be in connection, to be in relationship. But there's this part of our brain, which is, there's an actual place in the brain called the negativity part of the brain. So we are great at the negativity bias because we needed it for survival. So we're great at learning from the bad, but we're not so good at learning from the good. Does that make sense to you? Yes. <laughs> because we focus on the bad, and that's the nature of positive, and there are positive, I hate the word negative emotions, I like to say the weather, but you know the ones that we don't like to experience, sadness, grief, anger, all, all those, you know, um, they, they will predominate our life if we let them. Not because something's wrong with you, not because you're sick, not because you have a diagnosis, because that's the way our brains are wired. Right? So we're always having to work to counteract that. And I, I keep teaching you this, this part about your brain because I think it helps you not be so hard on yourself. You know? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, Sarita, here in the front, there's a picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Who's on this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just like you to know. So you know, we we are all hard on ourselves. So I'd like you to know it's work. It's exercise. Let's see what's next. Next. Okay. Now we're getting into the meat. Okay. So where did this stuff come from? It came from around the 1950s, and it really was all about looking at parents or caretakers, um, and and how they related to children. Uh, we did a lot, there was a lot of research actually done at the University of Miami. And this type of research wouldn't be allowed to be done today because of protective reasons, because what they were actually doing is separating mothers and children so they could study, you know, they were creating some situations that we, because of human rights and things, we wouldn't, they, would, they weren't torturing them, but they were separating them and creating situations that would produce anxiety. So it was in the 1950s, and they were looking at what happens when we separate children. And, and, they, and a lot of what they were observing is they spent hours and hours typically observing mom, or, uh, moms and, and kids, because we can't always get a hold of daddies. I don't mean to. <laughs> and they would just kind of watch them. And they watched the babies and the moms as they came and go. And the mother, well, the mothers wouldn't do anything horrible. Like if I was the mom, I was instructed maybe as a very small, safe place to walk out of the room. And they'd observe what, ha what would happen with the baby when I walked out of the room. And they noticed babies behaved differently. They didn't always behave the same. You know, and they weren't little, little babies, this is talking more proper age. So that's what this came out of, if you're interested in it. And they came up with the four attachment styles. Uh, in different books, you'll see different names, it's a little confusing. So they came up with the secure attachment. Uh, they came up with the anxious attachment. <laughs> Sometimes they call that the preoccupied, because you know when you're anxious, you're very preoccupied with yourself, right? And they came up with avoidance, and they came up with disorganized. Those are the four primary styles. So um, then what they notice is that these attachment styles, because remember, when you're young, you know, <laughs> The good, the bad, and the ugly is whatever children learn, what they live, and you know that's that. You know, nobody protects us. We're born where we're born, and so that gets templated very young. You know, you really remember stuff. I remember every Mr. Rogers song. When you're young, everything just goes into the brain like a sponge. So you learn this style of connecting. It stays with you through your adulthood. Okay, and these patterns of connecting 
had a tremendous, tremendous impact on us. We don't realize it because nobody teaches it to us to look for them, you know? Um, and when I was doing this, I was remembering, is anybody here when we did the, the loneliness? We did a couple of workshops on loneliness and being together. Well, loneliness, hi there, good to see you. Loneliness, the whole area of loneliness, I was talking about the um, Surgeon General of Vivek Murphy in his book. Loneliness is the number one mental health and physical health epidemic in this country, loneliness. And why did it come to my mind? Because it's, it's connected, you know? And, and think about this paradox. Think about this. Loneliness is the number one epidemic, and yet we have more electronics and more ways to be connected. We need to walk, I mean, look at the profoundness of this. We walk around with these things in our hands, and we're talking and connecting to people, and, and, and yet loneliness. And that, that, that was found pre-pandemic. All of those works were written pre-pandemic. Can you imagine what it was like during and after pandemic? And so I think the other piece is not just the pandemic, is that we don't really know because our attachment styles kind of get stuck there and we don't know. We're not, we don't know how to get the nurturance, you know, from these attachment styles. So some of this is about, to me, about attenuating your own loneliness and, and picking um, relationships, situations, experiences that do feed you and nurture you because that's a pretty profound thing that loneliness, because the loneliness affects heart disease, addiction, I could go on and on, stroke, dementia. Loneliness is huge. So this is kind of kind of like an antidote to that, to kind of begin to look at because I know for myself, it didn't even happen this week, I had to make a decision and have some shoulder surgery and I was angsting. I thought I went to one doctor, I met him a few months ago, really liked him, signed up because I was in pain. And then I had a consultation with another doctor about a week or 10 days ago and I was much more, for a lot of different reasons, I was comfortable, I could see, I just felt better, it was a better choice. Well, I had to speak myself up because I had this kind of childlike false loyalty. Like, how can I do this? I went to the first doctor and I went to him four times and he see my knee and now it's, you know, this false loyalty. Uh -huh. That has to do with anxious attachment and not being totally secure. And I had to really struggle with myself. Hey, I'm allowed to choose and undo it. But it was a struggle, you know? Because about because I wasn't trusting myself enough. And do you think he really cares if I give up my surgery? To, but that's what we do ourselves in our head, right? We make it very difficult. Um, let's do the next slide. Pedro, you have a question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Pedro has a question. Where? Yes. Where is he? Yeah. Okay. Is fearful and uh, disorganized the same thing? Um, they do sometimes call it fearful. They do sometimes call it that. That's a little confusing. It's a good question. Um, I think, honestly, I, truthfully, there's fear. So this is the only one that's secure. The other three are all insecure styles, and I think they all have fear in them, my opinion is, some, some more than others. Um, actually, at many times, the anxious uh, attachment style is much easier to work with, and all of these people can be extremely loving it's not that they're not loving or you can't have good relationships but they have certain things that, that get in the way so i think there's fear you know all three of them to be honest what do you think um uh, yes sir yeah but well, i thought it was fearful uh was part of the attachment style so yeah they, they fearful, use it disorganized they use it with fearful for avoidant avoid, okay Gotcha. That's the problem a little bit with this language. It is confusing. So what I just, I, I think in all the instances, this is an instance, I think there's, that's why I separate secure, anxious, avoidant, disorganized. My brain likes one word. <laughs> so that works for me a little bit. I think they all have some fear in them because that's why they're all insecure attachment styles. Okay. And it also, by the way, just to bring up the point, it doesn't mean if, if I'm predominantly secure that I'm never afraid. You know, <laughs> that, that, that's, yeah. so. Um, yes. Another question. No, I know you haven't gotten to this slide. I was just wondering if these were all, um, I mean, I don't know if the word is good or bad, or are these what we're trying 
you know, some of them sound good and some of them sound maybe, yeah. you know, not, I don't know, just yeah. asking. Uh, but, well, look, at, you're looking at this slide, yeah. right? So, um, the parent child stuff, this is why it can get very distressing, particularly if you're raising children or your parent, and whatever. Um, again, I heard you say bad or good. Yeah, yeah, okay, I so the, I don't necessarily want to use those words, but I'm just trying to understand. Okay, so don't get too in this. Think, think of it this way: these people are describing what they see. Um, you know how when you meditate, uh, the whole thing about meditation or mindfulness not easy to do. You're trying to adopt a, a thing of non-judgment. You're looking at it neutrally. I'd really like you to put that on. They're just descriptors. And it's not bad or good. It's it's like if we looked at this whole group, we would so vary in size, weight, hair color, body type, shape of our faces. That's really what it is. We're just all very different in how we do these things. So try to get out of that bad and good. Well, how about, how about um, more healthy attachment? Secure attachment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we all want to be. And in part two, which we're going to do next week is going to be more about um, the good news is this everybody asks us can i change my attachment style yes. and you absolutely can yes. absolutely can but not easy it's not like going to change your nail polish or you get a new <laughs> pair of shoes it's and, and, and really that's what we really are doing in hope for life we don't use that language we're, we're trying to teach you about you know you're, you're looking at, at your history you're looking at what happened. A lot of times people, absolutely, for the same reason people come in my office, they're in pain. And they haven't been able to, they've done, they're smart people. They've done everything that they could. They haven't, people come here because we're in pain or something happened in our life and we haven't been able to figure it out. And because a lot of it isn't just figuring it out. A lot of it is, um, and a very, uh, uh, a reverend said this, I think back in 1930, you know, because group meetings like this started in churches and temples a long time ago. And this is Reverend Cody Walker. This is a secure attachment. <laughs> <laughs> got his father, he's got his mom, he's all cuddled in there. Yes, I want some too. So um, what this wonderful Reverend said is in the crowd they have been wounded, in the crowd they shall be healed. We get wounded in our relationships. And in order to heal, that's why it's not an intellectual experience. We have to be healed in relationship, whether it's a hope for life community or a, a relationship, our, our girlfriends help us heal, or our men's group, that, that's how it goes. We have to be healed in relationships. So none of these things are bad or good. So put on your glasses of non-judgment. It takes a long, I wasn't thinking on you. It takes a long time to train your brain to not be black and white. That, and to, to look at things through the eyes of non-judgment. And a lot of times you'll hear me say, because uh, it works for me, and I've you know, look at it with soft eyes. Look at it with soft eyes. That's, that's my phrase for, you know, don't pick yourself apart, soft eyes. And just look at it with soft eyes, you know. Be kind to yourself. Let's take that off, that, that one. Uh, and by the way, that's a lot of, there's been a lot of pushback about the little, and controversy about the childhood attachment theory. Because what it didn't take into account was different cultures, different family styles. I mean, like, as Americans, we could, there's a really, I think, good example. As Americans, if people that have enough money to have, to have more than one bed in their house, some people don't. You know, in my husband's family, he's passed on now, but they grew up in Mexico, and there was a bunch of them that slept in a hammock together. So, you know, there's a lot of cultural variance. As in, in, in America, we prize, and this is going to show up here, we prize independence. You know, and, and, and a lot of child specialists would say, oh, no, don't have your baby still sleeping in the bed. That baby's too, well, people grew up with the whole family sleeping in the bed. And there's nothing, and they turned out to be healthy people. So there's a lot of cultural variance to these things, which is why that, um, for the same reason you reacted to that language and that side, people have said, you, know, you can't take that, you know, you can't take it every word like it's that. Okay, so, so obviously, you know, what we all would like is we'd like secure. So what is a secure person like? And I'm gonna, I want you to think while I'm talking about maybe, um, 
examples. Um, how many of you had some, you know, there was percentages, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you had some secure, everybody has some secure attachment, right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank God, right? You're very relieved. I like the survey that had you higher on the secure, right? Okay, so again, I'm going to say it again and again. We are all pound puppies. Nobody's 100% anything. And you're going to look more, like, like let's just say, um, I'm more anxious now because I'm two weeks away from a surgery. It's normal, right? So look, my, my style right now is more anxious, you know? So, hmm? It depends. Yes, and uh, sometimes you know, you're going to be more avoidant, you know, uh, you want to stand back. So here's what a secure attachment looks like. Now, what do you think, because I'm going to ask you after this, you know, who, who in your life, or what about you? Um, so securely attached people, and uh, this is not a you know, they're very, very comfortable with their feelings, all of them. They communicate them pretty easily. They're very emotionally regulated. It doesn't mean they don't get mad or sad. They don't scream and rage. They're able to deliver their emotions. They can cry. Or you know, um, they, they securely attached people. This is kind of interesting, given our culture. They can be very up close. They don't think about, oh, this is mesh. <laughs> they can be very up close, and they're totally comfortable. They can be here. They don't flip out when you go in, when you're out of town, you know? Uh, so they can move on that close, far continuum. They can be anywhere on it, and they don't flip out. You know, so they have a lot of flexibility on this, you know? Um, they don't play games. They don't play games. So uh, Alice came home to me, uh, particularly in the male-female relationship, because a couple people came, <laughs> came into, gave me examples this week. So, so um, in, the, in a dating relationship, so um, someone was saying that uh, she's really, really done a lot of work on herself, and she's really learned a lot about what she's looking for. And so um, she had a very nice experience with, with the young man, and there was a little kissing, a little making out and stuff. and. Um, so he called the next day. He called the next day, you know? No gameplay. I have a wonderful time. When can I see you again? She, said, <laughs> she says to me, do you think that's me? Do <laughs> you think, is it a red sign? You know, is it a red flag? And he called the next day, and he said how lovely it was, and could we get together this week, and did I have time? And he talked about the smell of my perfume. I said, I think this is possibly a keeper. <laughs> not, not, not a need. You know, we are phobic, phobic, phobic. We think dependence is a dirty word. <laughs> it's not. You know, people that are secure, they can be as close as they want, and they can be as far, and they don't have any, they don't have any craziness in their head about it. They're not afraid to call up the next day and say, I had a blast. When can I see you again? They're not playing that male-female game of I have to be cool or you know if I, if I do this, they don't care because they're securely grounded in their feelings and they trust them. Does that make some sense? Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, hear. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very simple for them. I like you. I want to be with you. I love you. I want to be close. You know, they can. They, but I want you to hear. They can be close. And so far, they don't flip out. But they're also very consistent communicators. Another example, actually right from my practice, another couple that are, is that when this husband is away traveling, he speaks to his wife every day. He's going to speak to her no matter what country he's in, no matter what time zone. It may not be long. He's going to speak to her. He'll probably send a text or two, particularly when he's out of town. So the, there's no big gaps in this communication. Okay? It's not perfect. It doesn't mean that sometimes that person isn't a little annoyed or hurt, but the communication is pretty steady. The communication, think of it as like water and food for them. They're going to communicate. Yeah, it's part of their survival. So you can see, when you've got enough of this going on, and it's kind of like, I'm security based, you know that posture in the martial arts? No one can knock me over. And when I'm, when I'm in that secure base, I feel comfortable and I can go out and work and I can learn that new thing or I can go to college 
or I can take on that job because I feel very secure here and I'm comfortable with all my feelings. Does anybody have someone that they're thinking of? Well, let me ask you first. What's the quality of this secure base 